Uh, my name is uh, Bernard Donoghue. I have the great honour and the pleasure to be uh, chairman of Lyft um, and a particular pleasure to be uh, chair during Lyft's 30th uh, anniversary. Thank you very much for coming along. It's great to see uh, so many uh, friends, family, Lyft alumni, people who've just walked in off the street, uh, curious tourists, uh, benefactors, partners uh, and associates. Um, you're all extremely welcome. It's, it's an absolute delight to see you all. Um, we're celebrating um, a number of things actually uh, this, uh, this week. Uh, the first is an incredibly important 30th birthday and it's uh, Erica's. Um, <laughs> Erica, who's standing embarrassed immediately in front of me, was 30 yesterday. So the, the amazing ability to have your lifestyle and your job anniversary coordinated so brilliantly is typical of Erica's professionalism uh, and timing. So in good uh, old-fashioned lift style, band, take it away. Happy birthday to you. I've, I've also just realised that I should never sing into a microphone because that was completely dreadful. Um, it, does, uh, it does also give me an opportunity uh, not only to, to congratulate Erica on her 30th birthday, but also uh, it's a really timely opportunity to congratulate Erica and indeed all of your team on the participation and education work that you do, which is a bit of the unsung bit of lift, but actually in terms of what we do and growing new generations of young people and children who are interested not only in theatre but also in internationalism is incredibly important. So thank you to you uh, for all the work that you do every day and enjoy your shower curtain. And if anyone needs explanation on that, go and talk to Erica afterwards. It's, uh, it's also uh, uh, another anniversary uh, this week and I was reminded when I was um, uh, reading the newspaper the other day it was 20 years ago this month that Lyft was responsible for the premiere of Death and the Maiden at the Royal Court Theatre. Uh, the fact that through Lyft's own endeavours, uh, we made this now incredibly popular, fantastically provocative, uh, really inspirational play uh, and gave it its first airing, um, I think is exactly the kind of thing that Lyft should be absolutely proud of in terms of looking back on its history uh, and inspiring in terms of looking forward. Uh, and I was reminded of it because it's just been announced, as you probably know, that 20 years on from its first premiere, uh, Death and the Maiden is coming back to the West End in October. So what was the most amazing vehicle for Juliet Stevenson 20 years ago, uh, I think is going to be the most fantastic vehicle for uh, Thandie Newton uh, in uh, uh, 2011. Uh, and the third thing, of course, is its 30th uh, anniversary of Lyft. Um, just as uh, a spark of creative genius uh, was uh, ignited in Erica's parents' household 30 years ago, <laughs> a spark of truly creative genius, well, 30 years, uh, 30 years and nine months, probably. But uh, 30 years ago, a, a spark of truly creative genius uh, was created here in London. Uh, and I'm going to talk about that in a second and ask Rose and Lucy uh, and Mark and Becky just to touch on that. From my own perspective, uh, I've been involved in Lyft now for uh, six years and for the last year as chair. Um, it's my enormous honour and pleasure to be associated with an organisation which has at its heart both 30 years ago and going into the future three things. The first is 
uh, bringing thought-provoking, uh, creative, energetic, uh, groundbreaking theatre from around the world to internationally minded audiences here in London. And presenting that theatre, that performance arts, uh, that uh, amazing new way of thinking to uh, audiences who are not confined by the traditional architecture of theatre. But as you will have heard from Mark earlier on, using things like waking you up at dawn with seven uh, hot air balloons going over your head, playing the, and I think you'll agree, the most beautiful ethereal music that will affect your dreams in the moment before you wake, 365 days before the opening ceremony of the Olympic Games. Things like, uh, and again, this is another pl plug for Dan, uh, seven ice cream vats, uh, driving in parallel through the suburbs of either London or Blackpool, depends where you catch them, uh, again, with, a, with an ethereal, uh, awe-inspiring, odd, whimsical uh, music which uh, makes you think about things, right the way through to um, uh, some of the projects that we put on last year during the festival and, and some of the ones that we're doing now. Uh, never orthodox, uh, never entirely comfortable, uh, always thought-provoking, always challenging, always taking you beyond a performance realm which is beyond yourselves. Uh, when Mark and I um, uh, were looking at what Lyft was and what it could be over the course of the last year and a half, and it's been a really bloody tough year and a half, by the way. It's fantastic now, but it's been a bloody tough year and a half. Uh, we went back to first principles, as you would expect a, a chair and artistic director to do. And we asked ourselves the kind of questions that the Arts Council would want us to ask of ourselves. Uh, and uh, the board directors and trustees wanted us to ask too. Was Lyft still viable? Uh, were we sufficiently different and provided something sufficiently different that wasn't available out there in the London theatrescape? And could we make a real difference in providing a platform for international players as well as for London audiences? And we were absolutely delighted to answer all of those questions, yes. Um, and it really is a tribute to the founding genius of Lucian Rose. And that's no false flattery because uh, if those principles weren't right then, they wouldn't be right now. Uh, and the fact that we've made that decision uh, is absolutely testament to their, to their foresight uh, as well as to the partnerships, the support, the investment that all of you have given us. And speaking of investment, um, one of the things that I'm absolutely proud to do when I, uh, whenever I stand up and, and talk about Lyft is to say that um, every member of the Lyft board is a donor and a benefactor to Lyft. And there are not many organisations actually which can say proudly that everybody on their board uh, is a donor uh, to the board. For us, for me, it doesn't quite matter how much people give, it's the fact that they give. Actually, the very fact of uh, giving and, and supporting and investing is slightly more important than the quantity and the amount. That said, <laughs> if you felt so compelled to ensure that you want to see the, uh, Lyft going through the next 30 years in the successful, dynamic way that we've gone through the last 30, uh, we would be absolutely delighted to receive your gifts. Uh, and you can make them out to Lyft uh, if you're providing a cheque or, or cash or any currency, uh, I think is something that we would be prepared to have. Um, we would absolutely love that because uh, Lyft is the kind of organisation that you put your money where your mouth is. And, and certainly that's been the course of the case in the last year and a half. Um, one last thing before I hand over to uh, Lucy. Um, one of the um, most important things that we have to draw on in terms of Lyft is the absolute passion professionalism of our staff who again over the course of the last year and a half have been uh, the ultimate definition of professionalism and commitment and on behalf of my fellow directors and trustees I just want to pay particular tribute to all of the staff who have made such sacrifices have invested so much passion and time and general personal generosity in ensuring that Lyft survives 
Um, thank you so much, because we wouldn't be here without you. So if I can invite everybody to thank in particular the Lyft staff. The, the second um, is the commitment of our trustees and board directors. And we've asked the board to really uh, step up uh, over in the course of the last uh, year and a half and, and really provide practical support. Um, we are uh, distraught to lose one of our exceptional board members uh, next month, uh, Donna Thompson, who not only has been a board director of Lyft, but in a previous life, uh, six or seven years ago, uh, no, actually it was longer than that, ten years ago, uh, also worked for Lyft as well, so it's gone right the way through uh, the, the, the Lyft process. Um, uh, Donna is, is going back with her family, with Jim, with Natalie and with Nicholas, uh, back to Canada. I was reminded the other day that during the Second World War, um, uh, Britain ensured that its most valuable, precious, artistic and heritage assets were shipped over to Canada where they could be safe and protected. And we kind of have the same feeling about you, Donna. Um, that you're being shipped back to keep you safe for when we need you again. Um, your passion and commitment for Lyft has been absolutely exceptional. Your generosity both of time uh, uh, and your networking. If anyone needs a workshop in networking, Donna is the global teacher of it. Uh, so on behalf of uh, Lyft, Donna, we just have a, a couple of things for you. So would you like to uh, come forward? And now in the key of C. <laughs> I oh dear. Um, I'm overcome. I'm overcome with. Um, joy and gratefulness and grief for leaving. Um, I just can't begin really to describe my love for this organization and for, for how it touches everything that I most deeply believe in in my life and I just want to thank you all so much for giving me the opportunity to support LIFT and I love you and I will be back. Thank you. <laughs>